Hi, I'm your host, Ron Knight. And I'm John Williams III, co-host of the show. Join us for the Entertainment First podcast every week. It's all about the music and more. Entertainment First Podcast, where it's all about the music and more. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, next to me, the one and only Mr. Big John E. Williams. The third. Welcome to the show. And the yeah, third, he's the comes, third. comes in the third sometimes, sometimes the fourth and the fifth. <laughs> I'm all of them. You all of them? All of them, yeah. Hey, I, somebody asked you earlier, was that from Chicago or was it from New York? Uh, Las Vegas. Let's keep okay, it at let's, that. Let's keep it real, huh? Yeah. All right. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we have a a prolific young man that uh, I've known for quite a long time. And uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, these two guys that are going to be in, on uh, my show tonight, I'm going to introduce you to the first one. I can remember when he was about, uh, say, maybe oh, he would have been maybe 15 or 16 years old. Uh, great athlete, and uh, was moving into directions that uh, I thought that uh, right now I thought that he would be opening at the uh, new stadium at uh, in Las Vegas here from uh, the uh, what is it the uh, Raiders. I thought he would be playing with the Raiders, but you know he chose another avenue. But that's okay too. You know people have to do what they love, and he's doing what he loves right now, and that is he is motivating young kids. I see him online all the time. I'd like to welcome the one and only Mr. Mike Philogene. How you doing? How you doing? What's up? What's up, man? I'm here. Las yeah. Vegas. I'm here. I'm, I'm so thankful and grateful for you guys to have me. Oh, man. You know, look, I, I told you a long time ago, you know, when we get in position, you know, I would have you come in and expound on your experiences since you've been out of high school. Yeah. And I see uh, you've grown into a, um, a very forward young man. And uh, I see you with a lot of kids, man, you know, motivating them and telling them about the things they should be looking for in life and those experiences that you've had. So let me know, tell me how you got involved in it, because the first time I actually saw you after you had come from college, really, mm -hmm. uh, and you were attending, what, was that in San Diego? No, it was in Sacramento. In Sacramento? In California, yeah. Right, and I saw you at... Um, the park, the park on uh, Tropicana. Yeah, that was the first time yes, I saw you. Yes, yes. And uh, then I saw you at um, the Las Vegas Athletic Club. Yes, and we talked there. Too. And we talked then. Absolutely. So we've been talking for a long time. For a long time. And, and you know what, Ron? You've been in my life since the time that I was in seventh grade and your son was in sixth. Mm -hmm. Right. So around 14 years old. And, uh, you know, you always was the gentleman that always wanted to share wisdom with me, but... I was not hearing it, man. I was too young to so grasp right. these, 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 these information that you were speaking. Mm -hmm. um, but a little quick story about me. Um, I'm 35 years old. Um, I was uh, born in Florida. I came out here when I was six. Um, my first language was not English. It was French Creole. My two, my, both of my parents are from Haiti, so two immigrant family. And uh, it, it, was, it was a struggle out the gate. Because, you know, you come into this world and you don't really understand your parents. You don't understand your situation. And I started school and these teachers automatically classified me as stupid, slow, dumb. Mm -hmm. And I believed that for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And I guess sports was the only way for me to actually have a sense of uh, happiness, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I just started playing sports and I was actually pretty good. Yeah, I noticed that, um, you know, I noticed you guys a long time ago, man, because you actually had one of the the few championship teams at Clark High School when uh, you guys were well, as a, as one on that football team. And uh, I, I was really impressed. Personally, I was impressed by every guy on that team. I, I don't see very many of the guys now. I only see you and uh, and Kurt. But, uh, you know, those were, those were years that... Uh, you know, you, you have to cherish, you know, you have, you have to cherish those years. And, you know, I know you guys weren't going to listen and do the things that, you know, adults do do. But 
you know you had to go out in the world and learn for yourself. Yeah, that, you know, that's very important um, to to find your identity because the world automatically uh, makes it seem like you're only fit to be an athlete or you're only fit to just be this or you can't go this route. And it took me a long time. Like uh, with no one knew uh, on this journey, no one knew that I did not know how to read till I was 22 years old. Mm. But I was a stud at uh, playing sports, mm -hmm. so I, I was okay with hiding it from people. But <laughs> right. when school was done with, now these are layers that I had to face my, in, with myself. Mm -hmm. So, no, okay, when am I going to ever get a chance to read? If I ever have a daughter, I do have a daughter, I need to be able to read to her because mm -hmm. if I don't, she'll be dealing with the same thing I'm, I, I dealt with. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's, it's just a remarkable thing that, you know, um, it doesn't matter how it starts. It, it matters how you can start figuring out and start changing the way that you see yourself. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't matter what anybody thinks of you. All that matters is what you think of yourself. Right. And I think that opens up the gate of finding yourself mm -hmm. and finding that identity of you know being being really really valued to this world. Right. Hey, John, and you said you had some questions for Mike uh, earlier. Well, you know, I mean, it's really nice what you're doing, and it's, in, and it's like, wow, I, I have a question. I mean, not learning how to read, was that really tough, or? Yeah, really challenging. Yeah. I, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to tell, I didn't want to express that to anybody. Right. And I kept that to myself for a long, long time, but it was, it was also overshadowed and glossed over because I was good at sports. Right. So they treated me, I was in a I was, I was treated in a, in a different category than everybody in the school, because I was good at sports. And so I didn't read, I didn't know how to read until I was 22, but I knew that I got to a point to, to ask myself, there's probably somebody out there that's dealing with something worse than me. Oh yeah, and there always is. In, in, 100%, and you know, in the time of school, I, I was, my situation at my father's house was kind of rocky, so I was going to friend's house, couch to couch, the whole time I was in high school, not knowing what my next meal would be. And so, uh, it humbled me too. Because I was very cocky and, and very not being so grateful. So it humbled me in a way of letting me understand that everybody's dealing with something. But um, just because you're dealing with something, somebody's out there that's dealing with something worse than you. Oh, yeah. And, and the thing is that you staying at somebody else's house, yeah. you, you get that motion that here's somebody trust you, like you, yeah. let you stay there, yeah. whatever's going on at your house is a whole different situation. And you can see the difference, Absolutely. which makes you go, make a different direction in your life. Absolutely. But, but it, it took a while because I was still making a lot of mistakes, hanging out with the wrong crowd, um, you know, not knowing what direction I really wanted to go. Sports was like, I played sports in college, but it, it, it got to a point that um, when you play sports, that's just only a skill. You know, every human being on this earth has a gift, and that's inside of you. You'll never find that outside of yourself. It's inside you already, but you got to know what that is. And so what did you do when you found out about that? What did you look at in the, for the future? Or yeah. What did you look at? I, I, looked, at, I looked really deep in myself to, to find myself. Every, you can look at history. Everyone in history got to know themselves, spending time with themselves. You, you will never find yourself in someone You'll find yourself spending time with yourself. That means focusing on blocking all the noise, all the chaos that's outside, and focus on your inner world. Because yeah. your inner world is peace. Your outer world is the chaos. So I, I took the time to spend time with myself to get to know myself. And my passion was to share my story, but also behind what your story is, it's a movement, a program to get people to actually take that pen and take ownership in writing their own script to their life. Right. And, 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 you know, I want you to expound on, on, on some of the things that you're doing right now. Right. Um, I do an outreach for, you know, kids, uh, single fathers, um, mothers. That j That's the most important thing. Most parents, when, when they bring a child into this world, they don't even know what their kid is capable of doing. So when, when you're in school, uh, a, a, a one-hour test can't register the capacity of that hu what, what that human can do. That human has genius in him. So I know from the time that since I started my road to not knowing how to read, coming into this family situation that I didn't control, I couldn't control. See, I, I see, I, I really realized that life happens for you, not to you. 
And I looked at the situation that I'm a good enough person with the good, but I'm an even better person with the bad. So that experience that I didn't understand what was going on propelled me to actually be here because these teachers were saying I was stupid and I was dumb, but I was believing it for a long time. And then I actually started talking to myself and having a conversation with myself differently. <laughs> because the, the most important conversation you'll ever have is with yourself. Right. What do you tell yourself? Not what other people tell you. What do you tell yourself when you look exactly. at yourself in the mirror? How do you uplift yourself? So now I just go out and I want to inspire people to, to know that they are, the, they, they are the author of their life. And if you can write the stuff down and have a direction of where you're going and you constantly focus and look at that and you have goals and you have people that's like-minded like you and to uplift you, not, put, not, not turn you down, uplift you, then you can, find your, you can find the success that you really want. And it's so true because, you know, I've had my ups and downs and Absolutely. I have my downs. Even till today, I say, why was I around this person? Right. Why did I do? But at least what I did was <clears throat> move forward and say, forget it. I'm going to do what I need to do. Absolutely. And uh, try to keep a smile on my face. Right. Absolutely. Because, you know, no, no matter what, at the age that I'm in, I still deal with challenges. You know, that's a, that's a part of life. But, you know, there's three things that we as humans have to actually pay attention to. Um, is that... It either people are around you because of you, or they're around you because of your gift that you're carrying, or they're around you because of your vision. And you have to make sure you actually divide what type of people are around you. Because if they're around you because of your vision, once you leave this earth, they want that vision that you have. <laughs> that's good. That's for sure. And, and I used to think also, people, when I, when I speak and, and, and I connect with people, they're not around me because of me. They're around me because of my gift. It's not me. So I know that I'm so humble in all the experience I went through that I'm humble enough to know it's not me. I was on this earth to actually speak life into people and to uplift them. And if I do that, I get that. But I want people to be around me because of me. And you know, that, that really, that, that's really, really something that you pinpointed. Because I can remember why I chose music. And I have asked many, many people why they were around. Yeah. Okay. They were around me because I was a singer. Yeah, that's, that's your gift. Huh? Yeah, that was yeah, my gift, you know. Gift. And, uh, but, you know, uh, it's funny because as you go through life, you start to find out where you, are, where you want to be placed. Right. Where you actually want to be placed. And I tried to tell, I tried to tell you guys that when you were come, getting out yeah, of school, yeah. but I was, I, was told the same, I was told the same thing that you actually did to me right. coming out of school, and that was I uh, had a, a my, one of my mentors was was a guy named Philip Battle, and he used to always tell me, you know, I'm not going to tell you anything right now. He said because your mind's not ready for it. Right. He said, but you will find out down the road. He said you have no, there's no, he said there's no way you're not going to find out. Right. And I can tell you, a lot of time. I bring him up in conversation because you want to know something. He was pinpointed, but he had the experience. That's important. That's important too. And also, one of my good friends he told me this a while ago. When you have a conversation with people, you got to make sure that that to your point of you, you was right on the point. Like you didn't give us too much information. You gave right. us just a little bit. And, and in life. If, if you give someone, if you drown them with wisdom, right. it, they're just going to drown. Yeah. But if you, if you give them a little bit of wisdom, you give them half of the rope, they're going to always want to come back for more. Yeah, exactly. And that's when you have them, because now, now you open up their brain to, to have them realize, like, that's interesting. So now they have a different perspective of, like, right. wow, that's, I'm curious to, to know that. It, it, it's, it's just, it, it, everyone has a capacity to, to learn something new. And right. I don't know it all. Yeah, and for as many times you fall down... That's how many lessons you will get. Absolutely. So if you fall down a hundred times, hundred times is a hundred lessons. It's, it's a hundred lessons, and, and, and you got to keep going. That's why you got it, it, it's one step at a time. You you can't worry about the, the problems of tomorrow. That that's gonna take care of itself. And you can't worry about the past. <laughs> and I think a lot of people, especially myself, a lot of people will forget about the now. And the, the most important thing is right. the now. So the past happened, you can't fix that, can't but fix if, it. If, the, if the situation occur again, you can correct it and like maneuver through it right. and understand it. But the future, you can't, you can't predict the future. Exactly. But you can focus on the now. What can you do today to prepare to, to have self-improvement? Right, self and prepare for at, at 100%. When, when that opportunity comes up. Absolutely. You know, because I, I know in, my, I know in my, my game, you can only prepare for it. Absolutely. And anything that has come in my game, I can tell you, I really didn't very much seek it. Right. 
I was just prepared for when the opportunity 100%. came up. You know? Um, let me ask you, uh, so how do you see yourself going forward in the next couple of years with what you're doing right now? <clears throat> um, the movement is, is going to be, it's going to continue to grow. Um, I don't want people to see themselves in me. I just want, when I connect with them, I want them to see themselves in themselves. I want to be, be able to get people to find the courage to see who they really are when they, when they look deep inside themselves. And they have to be bold, really bold, and, have, yeah, and, have, and be courageous to write that script that they want. If mm -hmm. you see it here, you can have it here. But it's going to take time because right. it, it, it's so much. We're, we're surrounded by everything around us that's instant gratification. So they think everything's supposed to happen like that. Mm -hmm. But when you have a seed and you plant it, it doesn't grow. You have to water it that's consistently. Right. You know? Right. And I think that I want people to understand that because me, I know how to read now, but it took time. I just knew that for me to get to point A to point B, I had to take baby steps. Right. And just like us as adults, we forget, John, is that as a baby, anyway, you you have kids. Did you give them a time frame how long they was, they was gonna be able to walk? <laughs> you can't. Exactly, but but humans forget that they was right. once a kid too. So it's a process to everything. Don't attach yourself to the to the feeling. Attach yourself to the process. Right. And if, right. as you attach yourself to the process, and don't worry about the outcome, don't worry about you getting things, worry about who you will become in right. that process. And I, I'm thankful, it's not about the money or anything like that, money is important, but I'm thankful to look back and see that I became a person that I really never seen I could become, but it took time to do that. John, you got one last question you yeah, want to Yeah, I mean, I w I'm listening to what you're saying, so I may mean, go from sports to what you're doing, what's the most memorable moment? on what you've shown some kids. The most memorable moment is that um, I would say um, me being able to block out the all the negative stuff that I was hearing growing up. Because we all gonna have naysayers, we're all gonna have people quitting on us, we're all gonna have people that don't believe in our vision, but I got to a point to block all that noise out and spend time with myself to find this version of myself. And I'm not even in my prime yet. So imagine five years from now the person I'm going to be if I continue to work on myself and humble myself and to continue to share this wisdom that I have. Because it's not just for me. It's to actually share with people to get them to unlock the code that they have inside of them. You know, and that's really, really good on what you're doing because, you know, uh, especially guiding people in the right direction and let them know, no, step by step. Yes. It's not going to happen tomorrow. Yeah, it's not going to. And uh, try to forget the past and try to go where you're at right now yes. to move forward and be happy with your life. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Entertainment First podcast where it's all about the music and more. We'll be right back in just a few minutes with Mike Philogene. We're back with the Entertainment First podcast, where it's all about the music and more. Mike, I just want to expound on this before we go. First of all, I wanted to say I thank you for coming on the program. I really appreciate it. And I got to tell you, man, you have made a lot of progress since I seen. I saw you uh, when you were 14 or 15 years old. And I can tell you, whatever you're doing, stay on the path, man. It'll work out for you, no doubt about it. And um, as you said before, Things are not going to come fast. I've been doing this stuff now for almost 50 years, you know, and uh, there's been opportunities that have come. Some of them I, I decided I didn't want to do because I have some moral things behind me that I pro probably shouldn't do. But most of the things that I've had in life have come to me because I wanted to do the right thing. Right. So with that, once again, I want to say thank you for coming on the program. I certainly will have you back. In the future, in the meantime, be cool and don't be no fool. This is the Entertainment First podcast where it's all about the music and entertainment. Man, what's wrong with you? <laughs> man, what's I was, wrong I with was you? looking at oh, your man, ear. Y'all hear that? I, mean. man, I can't believe this. Man. I was looking at your what? ear. Oh, yeah, oh, man. <laughs> I, don't, I can't even believe this. Thing. It's all about the music and your ear. More. Entertainment. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Don't be funny. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs>